Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service. Let's begin this time with you in your homes and us here in the sanctuary. Let's bow our heads and pray. Holy Father, we thank you that we in our own fashion are able to worship together. Guide Pastor as she gives her sermon. Be with Melvin and I as we read scripture and lead the music portion. Father, be with each of us as we hold our own, as we stay in and stay safe. Father, for our, our neighbors, help us be kind and vigilant toward them during this time of uncertainty. Now, Lord, be with us as we seek your word for each one of us. We ask this in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing together first a well-known song to you, I hope. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Good morning. Uh, please check your mail this week for interactive Palm Sunday worship aids. Uh, as soon as Governor Hong Kong makes the announcement regarding an extension to the quarantine beyond April 7th, the senior the session will notify the congregation about Easter services. Uh, important Easter sunrise services at Flora United Methodist Church have been canceled. Please contact the church office or your elder with any prayer updates. The prayer page and announcement will be sent out each week via email. For those who do not have email, it will be sent by U.S. mail. Everyone is encouraged to mail, mail in their tithe and offerings to the church office. If you prefer, you may ask your elder to pick it up and bring it to the office for you. Thank you, Melvin. If you would now turn your attention to our prayer concerns, uh, this is what I know, and please remember that this is our joint worship service of uh, the fifth Sunday of March for both Flora and um, Delphi Presbyterian, First Presbyterian, and so um, I just heard yesterday that uh, Barbara had sprained i believe it was her ankle we want to keep her in prayer please remember all of our friends and family that is in nursing homes and is in hospice care 
Uh, Jim and Diane Justice are having to remain in Florida. Uh, it is, they're wanting to come home, but they have been told they, it's best if they remain there. Um, we want to remember all of those who are now unemployed due to this virus that have been told stay at home, those who are hourly employees that are not receiving a paycheck. Let us remember all those who are volunteering uh, during this time to feed those who are hungry. All of those kids and families who are accustomed to their children being fed at schools that get free lunches. All those kids that are getting free lunches during this time, you, they need to um, be fed by us. And so the Community Youth Center here in Flora and I know that other churches and like Burlington and other places are providing this. So uh, please keep them in prayer and see how you can help and volunteer with those areas. We want to remember that those who struggle with various addictions, during a time with a great, this is greater temptation time. This is when the devil is saying, oh, you can't get through this. You need to have, you know, a sip of alcohol or pop a little pill and it'll help take the edge off of having to be stuck at home or stuck somewhere. And so we really want to be thinking of all of those people and keep them in our prayers. And as Mr. Rogers said, look for the helpers. Look for the doctors, the nurses, the firemen, the policemen, all of those who are seeking to help us to get through this time. Keep them in prayer. The many victims of COVID-19 and their families throughout the world. Our national and state leaders, as they make decisions which impact not only our health, but our welfare. And all of us, each and every one of us, as someone said, we want them to know that we are Christians by our love in both word and deed. Um, I heard someone, some kids had pulled a prank on someone as they went through the grocery store line. They, the, a couple had uh, the mask on and were fearful of being exposed and two young children had played a prank and started pretending to cough and sneeze and so this couple so fearful of being exposed left their groceries and ran out of the store and the children just laughed and laughed I was like that was so very cruel so please let others know that we are Christians not because we come to church, but by our, the words of our mouths, but more by what we do and how we say things. Let us go to the Lord now with our prayer concerns. Dearest Heavenly Father, we give you the thanks and the glory for all that is going on in our world right now. It seems counterintuitive to give thanks during a time of such crisis. But your word tells us that we are to give thanks in all things. Lord, you have shut down the sports arenas. You have closed down all the cruise lines. All of the travel of airplanes just for pleasure's sake. Lord, you have done so much to cause us to be still and to know that you are God. Be at work in each and every one of us that we would take this time to know you are God and that you are still on the throne. That this would not be a time of complaining about what we cannot do and what we, where we cannot go. But that this would be a time of reflection of what all you have done for us. 
what all your mercies are, how they have overflowed upon our lives. Lord, we ask that your hand would be with all of those who have struggled so with addictions. Addictions of alcohol and of drugs. Addictions of shopping and of being mean-spirited. There are so many different addictions. Lord, we could not name them all. But Lord, let us be transformed by the renewing of our mind during this time. When there is nothing left to watch on TV because we've seen it all. Let our minds become bored with such trivialities that we would pick up your word. That our TV channels would be turned to one that is speaking your word. Lord, let us sit down and just speak to you and ask that you would reveal yourselves to us that we may know that you are God and that you love us. Lord, for all of those who are seeking to help, the volunteers, all those who are working at the hospitals and, and in clinics, those who still must work as policemen and firemen in dangerous situations, they don't get to stay home. They still must go to work. Those who are working in the grocery stores and making deliveries at restaurants and all of those things, watch over them, Lord. And Lord, we especially ask for your wisdom to be upon our national and our state leaders. They have decisions to make about our welfare and our health. Guide them that they would make good decisions, that they would seek your wisdom, not their own self-interest, not the interest of someone else, but they would seek your wisdom in making these decisions. And Lord, for each and every one of us, help us to show others who you are by what we say, how we say it, what we do, and with what attitude we do them with. Lord, may we live that wonderful hymn that they would know we are Christians by our love that we would reach out to our neighbors, the neighbors we don't even know, that live next door, in front of or in behind us, in the apartments across the street, or in the house down the street. Lord, we thank you that you are giving us so many opportunities to serve you here and now. We ask for ways to show your mercy, and here you have given us an abundance of ways. Let us not be selfish with our time, but let us be freely giving of our time with your mercy and your love. Guide us now as we pray the prayer that you have taught us through the centuries. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing together. Spirit, excuse me, Spirit of the Living God. <clears throat> My coffee went right down the wrong pipe. <clears throat>
Okay, the scripture today is coming from Ezekiel, Ezekiel verse 37, uh, verses 1 through 14. Uh, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for taking care of us. We ask you, Lord, to open our hearts, to open our minds, and to open our souls to your word. Come bless us, come meet with us, and transform us into what you want us to be. In the sweet and powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to, to these bones, and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendon and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the, to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, breathe from the four winds and breathe into these slain, then they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you out from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second read is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 6 through 11. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful man is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled by the Spirit. You are controlled not by the spiritual nature, nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of the righteousness. And if the spirit of him 
who raised Jesus from the dead, is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So I hope you're uh, enjoying our our casual atmosphere here without all of y'all uh, here in the congregation for our joint worship service uh, online. We decided to go very casual. Appreciate that uh, Tony was able to be here and lead us in a song and uh, Melvin with the guitar and the reading of scriptures with Melvin and Tony. And now Melvin and I are going to continue with a conversation style since you know y'all have heard melvin preach many times and uh y'all heard tony with her bible studies and her preaching as well but this is a good time that you've never heard melvin and i go back and forth in conversation about scripture reading so we thought this would be a good time for us to do that uh, so let me give you a little backstory on lazarus so Jesus had met them when he was going, through, he had gone, met Mary and Martha when he had been going through Bethany, okay? And so he had had dinner at their house. Remember, Martha was the one cooking, cleaning, getting all this meal ready for this guy and his 12 closest friends. And Mary had just sitting at Jesus' feet listening, listening to all this talk, listening to Jesus' teaching. And Martha comes in and says, Jesus... I need some help in the kitchen. Make her come and help me. And she's, you know, Jesus says, hey, she's chosen the better thing. You know, let her be. And I can just kind of see that. I know how my sister would have felt. Yeah, it wouldn't have been fun. Yeah, it would not have been fun. <laughs> have to do all the work and somebody else is enjoying the editing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, that... So that's who we're, we're talking about here. So then when Lazarus became very ill, they sent for Jesus and said, hey, you know, go tell, find Jesus, go tell him that our brother is very sick and to come now. You know, and I always wonder about that because, you know, if they knew that Jesus could have healed Lazarus right there and then, why did they send for him? I mean, death is just part of life. Death is a part of life. But also you have to understand that in that culture, we're assuming that there's nothing ever said about them being married. So with them being unmarried, their brother being their only means of, you know, their protector, their kinsman redeemer, they could not own property. Everything would have gone to the next kinsman redeemer. Uh, and if you've ever watched Downton Abbey, you know how important that next male heir is. Um, but in that, they would have been left to being prostitutes. Finding, or finding a man that would be willing to take them in. And it could have been very bad for them. And so the idea of having this, their only uh, means of support, living in, I mean, they love their brother. But this was more than that. This was their livelihood, their, their security. So that's why they really wanted Jesus. To say, He's got to live. But it's interesting that when I was studying this, I, we know that Jesus waited a couple of days before going. But when I was studying this, it said that by the time they even got to Jesus, Lazarus was already dead. And so then two days later, when Jesus went, when Jesus got there, he'd been dead for four days. So even if Jesus had gone that day, Lazarus was already dead. But we, you know, there's other places where Jesus rose, raised people from the dead. You know, but they hadn't been dead that long. So this was, yeah, this was like the miracle of miracles. Um, I mean, dead four days was really big. So then Lazarus in verse 4, um, and so this is from uh, John the 11th chapter, if I, I didn't say that earlier, um, from the NIV. So in the fourth verse of chapter 11 of John, Jesus is telling them, he's like, after they've 
Mary and Martha, they had sent someone to tell Jesus that Lazarus was sick. He says, this sickness will not end in death. He says, no, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. You know, and I wonder about that. Why does Jesus say that God's Son will be glorified through this? What, through the sickness? Yes. Because later on, when the whole crowd, as Mary and Martha come out, and they are speaking to Jesus, and Lazarus is raised from the dead. Now remember, Lazarus was in there for four days. So Lazarus is raised from the dead, and other people see this. The Pharisees and all of them, that is when that really just solidifies that they are going to kill Jesus. They've been talking about it and talk about it, but now it is absolutely, we are going to kill Jesus, and they were going to kill Lazarus. And so through that, that solidification in their minds that this is a done deal, Jesus is glorified through the cross, through the sufferings, and through the cross, and then through his resurrection. That is the catalyst that gets them. I mean, they have not planned out that, okay, we'll get Judas, and he will betray him, and we'll, you know, Pontius Pilate, and all of that has, is not planned out. But it is. We are starting, we are going to set things in motion. We're going to figure it out. The talking is done. So, yeah. Um, so, let me catch back up with my, where I'm at. Uh, so, Martha had come out to him at first um, and had, was speaking with Jesus and said, you know, uh, she's all upset and she's crying and she's saying, you know, Jesus, if you had been here, you know, Lazarus would not have died, would not have died. And says, you know, says, do you believe says, your, that your brother will rise again? And she says, yes, yes, I know. At the last day, you know, there will be the resurrection. And then here, verse 25, verse 25, this is the key verse. I love this. It says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And that is just so, so amazing. And I love how that starts off, I am the resurrection. Because that goes back to the, remember when Moses sees the burning bush. Who shall I say, you know, what is your name? I am. And that's, I am the resurrection. And so, you know, that putting together of that, the, the mosaic uh, understanding of I am with now with Jesus. And so Mary's like, yeah, okay, I get this. So, I mean, Martha goes, she's understanding this. And so she goes back to the house. She gets Mary and, you know, takes Mary aside and says, Jesus is here. You know, come on. So... Mary comes out. Well, everybody at the house that has been grieving with her, they follow her thinking, oh, she's going to go to the tomb to grieve. So Mary with this entourage, and she sees Jesus, and she just falls down at his feet and is crying. And she echoes what Martha has already said. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. I mean, this is so intense. This is so important to them. And so... <coughs> Excuse me. And so Jesus, the, the shortest verse of the entire Bible, verse 35, Jesus went. And those two words is such intense emotion. And it tells so much about how Jesus is fully human as well as fully divine. And it says that you know, he felt their pain. He felt their anguish. He felt their heart breaking. I mean, he knew Lazarus was going to live again because he knew what he was going to do. But he knew how much their heart was breaking. And so it says, you know, you know, where have you laid him? Show me the tomb. They go there. They, you know, and he says, roll the stone away. And they're like, uh, he's been there four days already. You know. They don't openly talk about that the body's been decaying, but they, it's the unspoken thing of, you know, he's, there's going to be a smell. It's not going to be pretty. And so 
But Jesus says, roll the stone away. Let's get to this. Yeah, we're, we're, everything's going to be fine. And they trust him. They trust him. They know he is the Son of God. They know in their heart that he is the Messiah. And so they roll the stone away. And then Jesus cries out in a loud voice. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And here comes Lazarus out of the tomb. He comes out and he's just, I mean, he's all wrapped up in the grave clothes with, you know, the, the linen cloth around his face, his hands, his feet. Everything is tied up and he's kind of, you know, bouncing along. You know, the music is like, you know, just in a potato sack type thing. You know, just bouncing on out. And, but before that, before he calls him out, he prays. And he says there in uh, verse 41, he says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus did not need to pray out loud for God to hear him. He knew God heard him and that God would do whatever he asked of him because he was God. And that gets a little tricky when you start talking about the cross and all of that. But it was just so, it was for everybody else's benefit to know that he was talking to his father, who was God, who would then do whatever he asked for. And it was just amazing, just amazing. So then he calls for Lazarus to come out. Lazarus comes out. And he says, take the grave clothes off of him. He's not dead. And there he was as they were taking the, clothes off, the grave clothes off of him. He was just as he was before he was became ill. There was no decomposition of his body. Everything was fine. And so I've got a few questions for us up here. Um, so, so Melon, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, how can you, how can we um, help those that are going to be watching this later on? How can we tie the stories of Ezekiel and the dry bones together with what Tony read earlier from Romans, from Paul's letter to the church of Rome, and the story of Lazarus? How can we tie all of that together? What are some of the connections or what are some of the differences? That's a great question. Um, just thinking through it, one of the things that comes to mind is the fact that it, it, at least in the Ezekiel story, we see uh, Ezekiel following the, the commands of God just to the letter. He's being told what to do and he does it. There's no emotion into it. He's just uh, doing it because he's been asked to do so. Whereas Jesus, there's a purpose, there's a commitment, there's, uh, there's a feeling, there's a mourning that he is displaying. Okay, so you're saying Ezekiel did not grieve over all these dead people. Correct. There was no sense of, I wonder why all these people died, how they died. He's just there in their bones. Correct. Okay. But Jesus is attached. Yes. He's committed to this family. Okay. So, those are some of the differences. What are some of the similarities? Well, the one thing that comes to mind right away is that in each instance, uh, for lack of a better term, God was glorified. God came through. Yeah. So with Ezekiel, God showed his power by doing something that Ezekiel might have thought it was impossible to do. Mm -hmm. And by obeying and staying truth to God and doing what he was told, he got to witness a miracle, which with Jesus, same thing. In each instance, both Mary and Martha think that it's done, that mm -hmm. there's nothing that's going to happen, or, uh, you know, pretty much it's, it's, it, the, the tone of finality is in their voice, but Jesus came through, they believed, Jesus acted, and Lazarus came forth. Gotcha, gotcha. And then with Paul's letter to the church in Rome, his whole thing is, if you have the spirit of God, then even though you die, you will live. Your spirit will be alive. And so the whole 
message in this is, are you still alive in Christ? I if didn't you notice was, all those ifs. Yes. It's if you have the Spirit, if you are alive in Christ, if, you know, even though your body dies, your soul lives on. And you will be, you know, just if you have the same spirit that resurrected Christ, then you too will be resurrected. Uh, okay, let's see. What is our next slide? I mean, the questions I asked. Okay. So how can we relate this to our congregations, to our communities today? You know, I was talking about finality earlier, and I know that at times... And, and not just this church and any other church, there's instances where we go through struggles and we uh, are confronted with situations where maybe, I mean, I've even seen it in churches where they get split and half of the congregation is gone and the feeling sometimes is that we're done and, mm -hmm. and we're not done. Um, but I, I can see how through what Jesus is showing us by raising Lazarus, he can also just raise a church. He can raise and, and, and raise uh, like somebody who might have walked away from the faith and is coming back. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Breathing new life. Just as he promised to breathe new life into those bones in Ezekiel. That, that, that whole thing with those bones as he was telling Ezekiel is that that. But that represented Israel. And that they would come back to life, but they would not fully come back to life until the Messiah had come. And as they accepted the Messiah and the Holy Spirit, that is when they would fully be alive. And so for a congregation or a community, once they decide to tap in, as Christians, tap into the Holy Spirit, that is when they can be fully alive, yes. even though they are few. Yes. Um, and I go back to uh, some of the battles in the Old Testament when God said, oh, that's too many. you got to cut it in half. No, let's reduce it down to only about 300 people. That's way too many. You know, it's you got to see that God's doing this. It's not you doing this. It's God's doing this. You know, for God to be glorified. Absolutely. Because it is the Spirit of God. So then to the theme of doing things, our little thing, doing things to make God smile. Um, I can see where I've seen people from in both communities um, and in various communities around Carroll County that are reaching out and helping with preparing meals uh, to be taken, or helping folks who are unemployed during this time, um, helping them with making sure their utilities are paid or putting gas in their car, um, things like that is doing things to make God smile. But it really makes God smile when you do it in the name of Jesus. You're not just doing it because I'm a nice person. You're doing it because um, I heard a, a lady say she had bought the person behind her at a uh, fast food place. She had bought the person behind her um, their whatever they had bought at, you know, their meals. And when she told the, the, the cashier, she said, I want to pay for their food. And just tell them God wanted to see them smile today. And the cashier was like, what? And the lady said it again, said, tell them that God wanted to see them smile today. Well, that made her smile. And then as the woman drove off, and then you could see the other, you know, the people in the other car, when they were told that, they smiled. But they knew it was because of God. It wasn't because of this person or that person. It was because of God. And it wasn't wanting any recognition. It was because of God. So doing things to make God smile and to glorify God. Um, 
But going back to things being, when things are bad, when things just look, we, we can grumble, we can complain. But I keep hearkening har back to Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through. I don't think I could ever say Psalm 23 and not say it in King James. <laughs> I don't think I could say it in New King James, just King James. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. And the thing that, to me, what is saying here with, with Lazarus, with with the uh, you know, if you have the spirit with Ezekiel and all of that, is that no matter what is going on, whether it be plagues, famine, COVID-19, whatever it may be, that we may be barely walking through a situation. We may be running through a situation as hard, as fast as we can, but we may just be barely crawling through. That we will continue moving because we're not going through it by ourselves. We don't have to go through it by ourselves because Jesus is with us. It doesn't say sit down and wallow in it, feel sorry for yourself, and Jesus will sit there and pat you on the back and say, oh, you poor thing. It says he will walk through you, through it with you. And I think that is the most amazing, amazing thing. That's awesome. Let us close in prayer. Oh, dearest Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Thank you for this technology that you have given us that we would be able to reach out to others in this manner during this national and world crisis. Lord, we pray that this message would touch more lives than we could ever begin to think could be touched. Lord, may your name be glorified. May your spirit be welcomed and be brought to life. And so many, may those who have perhaps forgotten that when they were baptized, they were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that they have the same Spirit that rose, that caused you to rise from the dead, is living in them, living in us. That they would remember and would start to kindle that flame once again and start to act and live as though the Spirit were still alive in them and would seek your face daily. We ask all of this in Jesus' holiest of names. Amen. And at this time we have a closing song for you. It is by Lauren Daigle. And uh, this is a YouTube video of her singing her song, Dry Bones. And so I hope that you enjoy this.